Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live education program. My name is Rachel. I am the education specialist here at the Topeka Zoo, and today, we are going to talk about first grade curriculum relating to humans mimicking animals. Now, last week for first grade, we talked all about adaptations. How adaptations are things about the way plants and animals look and behave that allow them to survive. It had to do with things like their claws, their teeth, their body parts, their behaviors that allow them to grow, survive, and meet their needs. Animals use these adaptations to solve problems as well. So today, what we're going to talk about is how humans actually look to animals and their adaptations as a way for us to solve our own problems. So when somebody copies something else, this is what we call mimicking. And you can find examples of mimicry all around the animal kingdom. What I have here is a picture of what at first glance looks like a snake. However, if you look closer, you might see that this is not a snake. Can anybody tell what kind of animal this actually is? So it's got what look like two eyes and a mouth down here. If you were a predator flying over or walking by, you might instantly think, oh, that's a snake, and stay away because you've learned that snakes might be an animal you want to protect yourself from. This is actually the back half of a caterpillar who cannot do you any harm, but by mimicking the face of a snake, it keeps itself safe, which solves its problems. If predators don't want to eat it, this caterpillar is able to survive and find the food, water, shelter, air, and space that it needs. While humans have a whole industry, a whole career field that we call biomimicry. Now this is a really fancy word, biomimicry. Mimicry just means copying, and bio means living things, like plants and animals. So biomimicry is when people solve our own problems by getting ideas from nature. And if you look all around the room you're in or all around human inventions, you might see that a lot of the things that we create are inspired from nature. Let's look at an example of this. One of the easiest examples we might be able to see is this right here. This is quills from a porcupine. Porcupines, like the one right, like some of these quills right here, have really long, sharp quills. And they use these quills for defense. It's not just porcupines that have spiky features all over them. Animals like hedgehogs, tenrex, and echidnas do as well. Many plants, like the acacia tree, also have spikes all over them. So spikes in the animal kingdom are something that allows animals and plants to protect themselves. Well, humans have done the same thing. We have adapted many of our weapons, like swords and knives, as a way to protect ourselves by mimicking creations of spikes in animals. So by looking at nature, we are able to invent differing types of weapons. We also are able to protect ourselves when we are maybe riding a bike. When any, if any of you guys go out and ride your bike, you know that you always have to put on a helmet. Well, the design of a helmet is to keep us as humans safe. But a lot of animals in the animal kingdom, like turtles and tortoises, have kind of a helmet-like structure on their body as well. Now, it's not on the turtle's head. Their shell is on their back, like this shell I have right here. But by having that shell on their back, it is allowing them to stay safe if a predator tried to attack them. Several types of plants also have cases on them as well. This is a bur oak seed pod, and if you look, it kind of looks like the design of a helmet. This hard outer case encompasses the seed and protects it, so predators can't break through it, and the seed, if it falls from a tree, it doesn't crack open. So just like we use helmets to stay safe, Turtles use their shells, and differing types of seeds use their um, encasings as a way to keep themselves safe. 
Now sometimes even our clothes are inspired by nature. Many of our military service men and women, they wear colorful uniforms that are camouflaged. They have these beautiful earthy tones to them that are brown and tan and green. And that allows them to look like the environment they are in. If you look up here, you'll notice that an animal over in Africa is beautifully camouflaged into the grasses. Can you guys tell what animal is hiding in the grasses there? It is a cheetah, and it is colored just like the earth as well. It's got beautiful tan colors and black spots on it so that predators do not see it. Our military uniforms do the same thing. So if they are over in another country and they are trying to stay hidden, they are able to camouflage to blend in with the grass and the dirt around them. So our clothes are sometimes inspired by nature. Now, a couple years ago, there was a really good example of biomimicry from a train over in Japan. This is a high-speed train that they were using to move from one place to the next. The problem was, when this train would go through tunnels, it would make a really loud booming sound, which people who lived nearby didn't like, obviously. They didn't like hearing big booming noises every time the train went by. So engineers redesigned the front of this train to be like the beak of a kingfisher. These are types of birds that when they fish, when they go and hunt fish in the water, they are so good at entering the water and their beaks are so perfectly designed that they don't create a splash when they go into the water, which means the fish don't hear them coming. So engineers went back and they redesigned the front of this train to look like the bill of a kingfisher. And guess what? It worked. The booming sound stopped and that train became silent. Talk about an excellent example of humans using nature to solve our problems. Another example that I really love is a cane that engineers used for people who can't see, for people who are blind. So blind people, they use canes as a way to know what's around them. But engineers, they wanted to take it a step further. So what they did was they studied echolocation in bats, which is where bats let out sounds and those sound waves bounce off of any other animal that is near. By using those sound waves, bats are able to pin out those sounds, it hits a moth or a mosquito or whatever they're eating, and those sound waves go back to the bat and they know exactly where their food is. So in designing this cane, they did the same thing. They used sound waves that pinned off the cane and it allowed the person who can't see to feel it, the cane buzzes, and they're able to know what is around them before they even touch it. I think this is so cool that we are able to help people based on adaptations from differing animals. Now it's not just animals that use these adaptations as a way to inspire humans. Humans, we get a lot of our inventions from plants as well. What I have here, this is a picture of plant burrs. And if you guys have ever walked through the woods or through a prairie and you come out of it and you've got all these little burrs stuck to you, you know how well designed these plants are. The reason that these plants have these burrs all over their body is because they want it to get stuck on other animals because that is what moves the seed from one place to the next. While humans were so inspired by the intricate design of the burrs that we actually based one of our own sticky objects off of it, Velcro. If you guys have ever had Velcro shoes or used Velcro as a way to attach a picture to the wall, you will know that Velcro works by hooking one side of the material into another. Well, Velcro is perfectly designed to mimic the shape of burrs in the wild. Very cool. One other plant example is the lotus leaves, which you might see on a pond. Lotus leaves are actually waterproof. If you notice, they collect the drops of water on top of them. 
The reason that they are designed to be waterproof is so they can float on the top of a pond really easily and they don't sink to the bottom. By doing that, it allows them to get the sunlight that they need for energy and for them to survive. Well, humans, after we studied and mimicked the lotus leaves, we've actually designed our own waterproof spray to spray on items like shoes so that when you're walking outside in the rain, your shoes don't get really wet. So by mimicking nature, we are able to solve our own problems. So what I want to do next, my friends, is I have two examples of adaptations that humans mimicked for our own inventions. So I'm going to show them to you, and this is a little bit of a quiz. I want you to see if you can guess which animal these designs were based off of. So the first one that I have is actually a backpack. You can see the model here is wearing this backpack. And this backpack closes over with lots of little grooves, little bands over it, and that helps allow it to stay protected. So if somebody were coming over and trying to get into the backpack, they would really have to um, unfold it to be able to get in. So this helps whoever has the backpack make sure it's safe so nobody steals it or nothing inside gets broken. So does anybody have any guess what is this hard shelled backpack? What animal is that mimicking in the wild by protecting the items inside? If you guessed armadillo, you are right. This backpack is called the armadillo backpack and it's meant to look just like a three-banded armadillo who uses his shell and curls up so that predators cannot break through it. By designing a backpack to look just like an armadillo's shell, it is allowing everything inside that backpack to stay safe. Really cool stuff. All right, let's look at one more quiz item. This is one of my favorites. So this is a tool that humans use to grab things really far away. So it actually has a handle right here that you can squeeze and then the extension goes in front of you and it's got a thing at the end that picks up differing items. So if you were trying to grab something up on the top shelf, you can extend this rod out, hold on to it here, and the top part grasps on to differing items. So what animal has a long body part that allows them to grab things high up in the air or down low on the ground? Can you think of an adaptation that a human might have found in nature that allowed them to create this invention? If you are guessing elephants and their long trunks, then you are right. Elephants have a long trunk that they're able to grasp things at the end with. So humans studied that trunk and they're using this tool as a way to do the same thing that an elephant trunk does. I love how humans are so inspired by nature. So what I want to do next is I want us to meet a live animal. This is one of our newer animals in the education department. This is an animal who also inspires human inventions. Now he's one of my favorite new animals. This is an animal that people generally think are a little bit scary, but they're actually really cool creatures. So I am going to pull him out. Hey buddy. I'm gonna get him out of the back or out of the pillowcase. So this is an animal that is not in Kansas but he does live in our Gary Clark education realm and these guys are over in Africa. Now his name is Garrus and he is about 20 years old. So this is a snake. Now snakes some people think are kind of scary but they're actually really good to have around because they control populations of animals like mice. If you have a snake around, that means it is eating all of the mice and rats and keeping our world clean. Now, just like all of the other animals that we have talked about today, snakes have inspired some pretty neat human inventions. One of them is actually a robot. 
This is the picture on the bottom or on the top. It's a type of snake called a sidewinder. And these are snakes that actually move sideways. They don't propel themselves forwards. They actually go sideways like this. Well, humans sometimes need robots to go on what we call search and rescue missions. So let's say somebody got trapped in a cave and humans need to send in something to go in and see where that person is. Well, maybe it's too hard for a human to squeeze through. Maybe we're too big. They can send the search and rescue robot that they have created to look just like a snake that moves sideways. And this allows that robot to get into some pretty tight spaces and to move in all sorts of differing directions. So by mimicking nature, this helps keep humans safe, especially when we're in some pretty scary situations. Snakes are also studied for their skin. Snakes are really good at clinging on to things, especially snakes that climb trees. So sometimes engineers study the belly scales of snakes as a way to find materials like clothes that might grip onto things better. Some snakes, like Garrus here, actually have the ability to detect heat. They have what we call pit organs, which are organs on their lip right on the top here that allow them to sense body heat from animals like mammals and birds. Scientists oftentimes study how snakes can detect heat and use that to inform our own technology, like maybe figuring out ways that humans have the ability to detect heat as well through differing types of technology and equipment. So although an animal out there might be a little bit scary to humans, there is still a lot we can learn from nature. Did you guys know that everything that humans use, from our clothes, to our food, to the devices you're using to watch this today, like a cell phone or a computer, everything we use comes directly from nature. Now whether it's something that we are using to invent an item, or it's just an everyday item that we use to survive and to solve problems. Nature is very important. So you guys, when you are outside exploring, keep an eye out. Look at what adaptations might have inspired some of the inventions. And please, never harm an animal or a plant. We have lots that we can learn from nature around us. Now, if you are in first grade, I have a fun worksheet that I want you guys to do, inspired by today's class. This is called My Biomimicry Invention. And what I want you guys to do is there are four boxes. I want you to first pick an animal that inspires you and draw it in the first page. At the bottom there, I want you guys to describe how that animal uses its parts to survive. So maybe it's a kangaroo who has a pouch and the babies live inside that pouch as a way to stay safe. So you draw a kangaroo at the top and the pouch at the bottom. And then on the back, you might draw the invention that you are creating based on this adaptation. For instance, maybe you have a lot of school supplies you wanna carry. Maybe you create an invention that looks just like a kangaroo's pouch and acts the same way. And then at the bottom, I want you to write out what problem you are solving. Like, now I can carry all of my items in one trip. So create your own invention, draw the animal that it is based off of, and take a picture and send it in the comments of this Facebook video. The worksheet is linked in the video right now and will be on the Topeka Zoo Education website very soon. So that is our class on biomimicry today. Does anybody have any questions on humans mimicking animals and using their adaptations as a way for us to solve our problems? Any questions today? So as we are looking for the questions, I'll talk a little bit more about our ball python here. 
So these are constrictor snakes, which means they squeeze their prey. So Garrus here is not venomous. He cannot hurt me. He lives over in the grasslands, in the forest in Africa, and he likes to eat small mammals, birds, lizards, things along those lines. Now he is sticking out his tongue right here because that is how snakes smell. He is not licking his lips and saying, mmm, I'm hungry. He's actually collecting all of the particles in the air that we smell. They land on his tongue and there's a sensor, an organ at the top of his mouth that tells him what he's smelling with his tongue. Now ball pythons are one of my favorite snakes. They are very sweet and they're very beautiful. Garrus just got done shedding, which is something snakes do about every month. And so you can see he's got these beautiful, vibrant colors that allow him to blend in perfectly with the grass and the tree bark over in Africa. Okay, well, if we don't have any questions, then that is the end of our lesson today. We will be back tomorrow for a second grade lesson on habitats relating to grasslands. And we're gonna go out and meet a bigger animal in the zoo tomorrow. So join us then, 10 o'clock. Have a good day.